Okay, I'm uh, back out here messing around with my uh, that high speed uh, drill attachment for my lathe. In uh, the last video, I was I had potted it in with uh, uh, fiberglass uh, putty, body putty, and it, did, it didn't work. I had something wrong because it was way off center. And so. While that was setting up, I went ahead and I made uh, a new uh, taper um, adapter for the chuck. What I did was I put the chuck in a collet, dialed in the taper, and cut a new taper that's down in here that's, that's attached to the motor. And then I put it on, clamped it on a pin, a bigger pin, because I'm thinking that that other pin that I had it in a drill chuck and it must have been off or something. But anyway, I got it clamped on a pin to see if I see call it. And then I put some, um, this time I used um, 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 ah, JB Weld. I put four dabs of JB Weld on this side and on the other side. And plus while I had that out, I cut two, two slots in here for the wires to come through so I can you know, plug it in over here in the front, and and uh, I'm going to take it off of there. The JB Weld is all set up, so we'll loosen it off of the pin here, and we'll pull it back. And I took the pin out of it so I can slide it all the way out. So there she be. Uh, I'll just hook it up to, uh, if I can set you down here, so, well, I'll go over to the, uh, my bench, work bench here, because I want to uh, solder the wires on here, and uh, get you set up here, I'm going, I'll, I'm going to take and hook the power up to it. Test box back over here. Where it was, where it belongs. Wires around. And plug this in. Alright. Let's just hook her up here and see. Uh, positive wire. Down here, on that side, I don't want it to touch anything else. Put this on, keep it away from the got to keep it away from the housing itself so it won't short out. Turn it on low. Let's put a little drill, to drill into the truck here. I've got a pin here. I'll put the pin in there. And get it in the in the jaws right. Okay. Make sure those aren't touching anything. Go wobbles when it at that high speed that just too much given that shaft. I almost need to put a bearing. Ooh, I, un I un <laughs> undid the chuck. <laughs> almost need to put a bearing riding out here on the thing on this on this bigger diameter somehow. She spun open, it. but anyway, yeah. It, it runs smooth without anything in it. Oops. Let me get the chuck key here. Cause I, when it spun, it spun it open and it slammed it up. Tight. Oh, 
Well, I know it's running through here. It's just that whatever little bit of give is in that, in this bearing in the motor, plus the shaft is, uh, motor shaft is so small. And this isn't truly balanced, you know. Put this back in here. Maybe if I, maybe if I tighten it up. Maybe it was just too loose. Try that once. See if that makes any difference. Tighten that up. The wire is hooked up yet. Not touching anything. Okay. Feel a little bit of vibration out there. That's in low. This is, and then when I flip it to high, it's maxed out, max RPM. I think it'll work for what I want. A little tiny drill. You know, you're gonna. I'm gonna put a. A uh, small mark for where it's going to start. The drill is going to start, so and then it'll be plenty of give in that drill. Um, I am going to move forward with it the way it is, and then try to use it that way. And if it, if I don't like it, I'll make a new housing here. Probably make it square then, and a housing to fit over it to line up and then have a bearing running on this so that that's the only thing sticking out at the end is I'll have a bearing riding on here so anyway I'm going to go ahead and solder wires on and run them through here and then put some type of plug in on it uh, Probably just a, an old speaker plug-in or something that I can plug in and out, in and out of my uh, test box or whatever other um, power converter that I want to use on there. I'm not sure what I'm going to use yet. I've got several old power boxes laying around that I've <coughs> hung on to. It doesn't need much amperage at all to run that. Like I say, matter of fact, a 9-volt battery will run it really nicely because I was even thinking about putting a 9-volt battery on here somehow like that, making a bracket for it, and then just turning it on that way. Could do it off to the side here and just zip tie it, a battery onto it and, have a, and just have a plug-in like that on it. I don't know if I because it does run pretty nice with just a 9 volt battery with plenty of torque See if I can hold this if I can hold this on here yeah, I can see this this outside would I probably have to turn this outside of this is not running true to to the jaws. I wonder if I go ahead and do that right now. That'll help with the balancing of it. I could do that easy enough. Put it in a lathe, chuck it on there and just take a light cut on that. I am going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go set this up in the lathe over there and uh, see if I can't take a light cut on that without wrecking something. I'll come back when I get it all set up and I'll let you uh, take a gander at it. Okay, uh, the camera shut off so I don't know how much of the turning that uh, actually got shown, but I went ahead and I turned that to try to get the balance a little bit better and it did help so it does feel like it's running a lot smoother now I'm gonna go ahead and solder the wires on here now and uh, what I'm gonna do is have them come through the little groove that I put in here 
and there'll be a plug-in over here. I don't know if I want to just bury the plug-in in there. I'll, I'll decide that when I figure out what plug-in I'm going to use, but I'm going to go ahead and solder the wires onto the tangs and, uh, and uh, heat shrink it and everything. And, and uh, I probably won't video that. You've already seen me soldering before. It's basically solder some wire uh, tabs on there, on the t on the some short wires on the tabs on here, and then uh, put it all back together. Like I say, I I don't know what plugin I'm going to use yet. I'm going to dig through my supply of plugins and and see what I got for something small. Uh, small but yet easy to plug in. So, anyway, that's where it's at right now, and I'm going to go ahead and work on it a little bit, and we'll uh, come back when I get the solder wire soldered on and the plug in in it. Catch you later. Okay, here's what I got going on. I had an old. Uh, this is a uh, a uh, little board out of a computer or something that and I pulled the little momentary switch I unsoldered that this little momentary switch I unsoldered that from the from the back side here I un unsoldered that what I plan on doing is I'm going to use that for my on and off switch for the for uh, my drill chuck I took a 9 volt battery pulled the top out of it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount a switch on the back side of that, solder to one tab, and then solder the wires coming in. One to there, and then one off to the side. But I want to check to make sure this momentary switch still works after unsoldering it. That I didn't get it too warm. Uh, I'll get my slide my meter in here so you can kind of see the, the screen maybe. Here, I'll just set it up here. That way you can see. And I'm just going to check to make sure that it still works. So I need to hook my ground probe. Hook my ground probe to one side. If I can get it to lay here. And then my positive probe to the other side. Hopefully it won't it won't register. It is registering. Okay. So that's not good. It means that it's either short either that or I got the wrong. It might be that I have the wrong two. I'll bet it's I'll bet I got these bent the wrong way. I'll bet they should go the other way. All right, let's check that theory out and see. So that would mean that it's from here, this side, these two on this side. Oh, come on. And then, oop, this side be those two on that side versus these two on this side over here. Yeah, see now it's not making any. And when I push it, ta-da! So these two over here, those two over there. So I just need to <coughs> bend these 90 degrees. Hopefully I won't break them off. Um, I'll just grab a little top off, grab a pliers here. Let's see if I can't twist them around without breaking them. That goes that way. That goes that way. Those two gotta go have to go together here. They don't have to, even if just one of them one of them would carry enough current for that motor. But there now I can solder wire between those two. And then these two got to have to go to the battery connection. 
I need to go turn my furnace down for my garage here. Get a little toasty out here. Okay. So, it's like that. So now I'll take and what I'll do is I'll solder that right there and hot glue it in place. And uh, then I'll be set. And I'll be able to put a wire on here, a wire here, go into the motor, and then I'll have an on and off switch. I can leave the battery hooked up. I don't have to disconnect the battery hook. And I'm going to run it on a 9 volt battery, by the way. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do some soldering and some glue in here, and when I get it together, I'll come back. Okay, I got it all soldered together. It's not the prettiest job in the world, but it will serve its purpose. I'm going to slide it in here. Well, I'll just kind of show you. What I did was I zip lock or zip tied the battery in place. Got a little switch right here on the end, right there. That's that temporary, that uh, momentary switch. You can see when I when I push it, it. So I'll be able to slide this back when I drill the first hole because that's going to be pushing it back. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it a wrap until I actually drill, use it to drill a hole now. So um, I'll post up this videos for today and uh, we'll see how it works. So what else to say about it? I am waiting for another truck like that. I've got another one coming. I was thinking about putting it on uh, the little drill press that I made, my little high-speed drill press, but I think I'm going to leave that alone because that thing actually, I've drilled uh, several holes with it. It works pretty good, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to uh, mess with this thing a little bit more, and uh, and then hopefully I can get it to run a little smoother and drill holes like I want. So. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys later. Okay, I couldn't resist just trying it. Um, I'm going to turn the spindle at um, it is in two a thousand RPM, and then uh, we're going to try to drill a hole here. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Seems to be growing pretty good. That's about that's all about all the further I'll ever drill a small hole because that was probably 250, 300 thou deep that I drill, <laughs> drilled. And let me see what size drill that was. That was a. I can't really measure it real well here. See my calipers. That was a 20 something. <laughs> That's about a 22 thou. That was a 22 thou diameter there. And it drilled really nice. Uh, I think it'll work. You can see. I started it with a, a center drill. I put a center drill mark in there and then I went from there. But. You can see how far I went. It went quite a ways. So, anyway, I'm going to, uh, like I say, call it uh, pretty much a done deal here until I use it a little bit. Once I've used it a few times, I'll know if I like it or not. And if I don't, then I'll go back to the drawing board and work on maybe putting a bearing on the outside of that. Because if I went ahead and put a bearing out here on this or even a sleeve a bearing would be a high-speed bearing would be nice right there I don't know if I can get one cheap enough with that big a diameter I might have to go back here on this diameter in here which still would be all right 
It would still take the load off of the shaft. Anyway, so anyway, thanks for watching again, and we'll catch you later.